Okay, so we there's a conversation and then you edit out the part where you're having the conversation a little bit, huh? Oh, this is... Oh, this, this magic's out. Okay, the genie's out of the bottle. Yeah, Hoovy's Garage would not exist if I didn't get tweeted back by the most famous automotive presenter in the world, right? My origin, my background, I had a car dealership. I worked in the car business for 10 years. I was horrible at it. I, I gave it up and uh, started doing restaurants. But I got bored and I missed doing something with cars. It was actually really boring. I had a Prius, I had one old Mercedes diesel and my old Mercedes convertible, that was my first car. But I, I was mostly as normal as I'm ever going to get. And I really wanted to write. It was actually Doug DeMiro reading his articles on Jalopnik kind of inspired me to get going. But uh, I didn't know where to begin. I was just emailing people and saying, hey, I want to write for you guys. But you know, those idiots that email, they have no body of work, no experience. And you're just saying, hey, I want to write. And uh, of course, you're going to get shooed away. I had nothing. And then a friend of mine got a surprise invite for the Grand Tour, their premiere episode. They were out filming in the desert in California. And it was that $3 million opening scene where they had the burning van, you know, hanging there, spinning, all the cars coming through on the desert. And he asked me if I wanted to go. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely going. And I flew out at this last minute, probably, it was less than 48 hours notice, got on a plane. So I had another friend in San Diego that was also going to join us. And I convinced them to cosplay this. We dressed up as the Interceptors. I don't know if you remember this from Top Gear where they had Jensen Interceptors because they kind of did a 70s porn stash vibe kind of thing with the cars and all that. And so we all had the fake mustaches and the ascots and I had the pink scarf to be like Clarkson. And I had no idea what to expect. We got on a bus from a school and we were taken out in the middle of nowhere in a desert. We were the first bus there. We get off the bus. And there's Jeremy Clarkson, just right there standing there to, to greet you to get off the bus. I, I imagine because they had been out of it for so long that they were really kind of nervous about this new project. It's hard to imagine those guys being nervous about something, but you could tell they were really happy to be back into it and, and you know, really wanting to engage with the fans again. And I had conversations really with, with all of them, all of them, all three of them separately. Of course, Jeremy Clarkson recognized us immediately and asked if we had Jensen interceptors and uh, we didn't. I actually got him to sign my, I had a Mercedes CLK 55 key, which I guess I could put, give you the VIN and then that pops up down there, right? Ties in. And I really wanted to get James May. I had both keys out there because at the time my CLK 55 was out with my friend in California. So I had both sets of keys and I really wanted Jeremy to sign one key and I really wanted James May to sign the other key. So I had a slow key and a fast key. You know, the captain's slow key. It didn't work out, actually Hammond, I asked him to pass it to him and he ended up signing it instead of passing it to him. But I had a great conversation with Jeremy Clarkson and we kept bumping into him and, and I feel like we kind of hit it off. I talked to Richard Hammond a little bit about that winching up the dam and the Defender, that crazy, crazy video, one of the last series that they did with Top Gear. And I really didn't get to talk to uh, James May that much, but you know, other than just a few little hellos and that kind of stuff. But at the end, Clarkson, we're in the desert. They're doing the big flyover. He's supposed to come out. I've drawn a kind of a, a phallic shape in the dust on his windshield, you know, just, just to mess with him. And he, everybody's having a good time. He's handing out cigarettes to everybody. I don't, I don't smoke, but you know, it's just an incredible experience. And I'm talking to him because we started up Drive Tribe and I had got on in early on the drive tribe thing and was, was curious, hey, what's gonna happen with this? And, you know, it turned out to be not quite what everybody thought it would, uh, but at the time it was a really exciting thing. We had no idea what was gonna happen. It, I thought it was gonna be my golden ticket because I couldn't get in anywhere else. And I said, you know, if I tweet you, will you tweet me back? You know, it, it would really help me because I'm trying to get going as a writer and, and everything else. And he kind of, said some of pleasantry, I, I didn't know. But at the end of it, they didn't allow phones, which was absolutely amazing because you can picture an experience before everyone had cell phones where everybody wanted selfies, where you could actually enjoy the moment. You could actually be a part of this whole experience and not have hundreds of people with their phones out just, just recording everything and stopping these guys to, uh, to get a selfie. You were actually able to just engage with them, have conversations. They signed autographs, but, but that's what really 
made it amazing. And once I got back to the car where my phones were, I immediately tweeted him. It was a picture of all of us dressed up like the Interceptors. We were posing with the CLK-55 in the back. And I said, thank you so much for an incredible party, something like that. It was a pleasure to meet you. And he immediately tweeted back, immediately. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for coming. And all of a sudden, people are messaging me saying, hey, what happened? Including one, I, it was with Jalopnik, where I was trying to get into right there, and I kind of didn't hear from him, but then I took this tweet, screenshot it, emailed it to him, said, look at this, and he said, you want to write about it? And that's how I got in. If I did not do that, if I didn't fly out on the plane and go meet Clarkson and ask him to do this, and then the tweet and all that stuff, I, I wouldn't have any of this. It's nuts. And then it just keeps going because I really was enjoying Jalopnik, but it, it didn't work out. And it was all over in, in a couple of months. It kind of fizzled out and I was kind of bummed. I made about two videos, two, three videos. And uh, you know, I was like, okay, is this gonna keep going or is this gonna be one of those 15 minutes and, and, and it's up? And at the time, Doug DeMiro had just left Jalopnik and gone to Auto Trader, and I really got the idea that I needed to be his sidekick. I'd never met him before, just a total cold email where I just sent it to him out of the blue. It took him a week to respond. He was very nice about it and said, you know, we've already hired some writers and we're, we're good. And I was just so insistent. I said, no, please, just, let, just don't pay me. Let me write some stuff for you. And I don't remember the specific exchange, but they really wanted someone that could make videos. And I said, yeah, I can make videos when I, I couldn't. I was using an iPhone for video recording and then had a second iPhone, my old one, for sound. And I would just set it next to the car and I was editing all of this in Windows Movie Maker, which hadn't been updated since 2011 or 12. So it was 720, it was a, a horrible to edit. And I had no idea what I was doing. I made a video about my 78 Lincoln and I parallel parked it into the back of my 911, bumped the Prius, just, you know, it's how you drive it with a pinky and all that stuff. The shag carpeting just got really goofy and he liked it. And all of a sudden I've become the Doug DeMiro sidekick, the, the Robin to his Batman, which I've always wanted. And it's sort of where I've been ever since. And then it just gets even crazier because I'm not even a year into this and I get an email out of the blue, uh, someone asking if I wanted to do a reality show. And I thought, yeah, this, this can't be real. I've had a couple of emails with this and I just would Google the person as someone fresh out of film school. You know, it's kind of not, uh, yeah, it's obviously working out of their parents' basement, just, just throwing darts and seeing what sticks. But I Googled this guy and his film credits were Deadliest Catch, Axemen, uh, Storage Wars, just a huge resume. And I got flown out to California, met with him, signed a holding deal. Everybody told me, including Doug, that, you know, we signed holding deals and nothing ever comes of it. I immediately get picked up. So now I'm going across the country, buying cars for every episode, and I have a camera crew with six people following me around as I buy cars all over the Midwest. And, and now, basically a year in, I have a reality show. I have no idea when it's going to air. It's kind of complicated because it was uh, Verizon was putting it on for their Go90 streaming service and it went bye-bye. Then it was supposed to be on the Rated Red platform and they tubed that website too. Uh, so it's out there. It'll, it'll see the light of day at some point, somewhere. We're trying to figure that out, but, but it's been a heck of a ride for two years. And, that's, and now, I'm, now I'm here in Vinwiki. This is, this is quite an achievement. So yeah, it's darker in here than I thought. So I have no idea if it's going to work, but I'm about to go try it out on the Porsche and I'll let you guys know how it goes.